What's going on guys, it's Lego Nerd here and today I am doing a showcase video on my customs from Avengers Age of Ultron that was released in 2015 and I'm just now doing these figures to celebrate the Marvel Cinematic Universe's 10 year anniversary and I have a few special announcements that I need to say at the end of the video so stick around if you want to hear those or you can just skip to the end now, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys Captain America in his new suit, the Iron Man Mark 45, the Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, the Hulk, Iron Man Mark 43, Thor, Pietro Maximoff, Quicksilver, Vision, Hawkeye, Clint Barton, and Ultron himself. But yeah, guys, these figures I've been working on for the past couple of months at least. Uh, just trying to get them ready to have them showcased by the end of the year. Not really on a specific date, just wanted to get it out by the end of the year to celebrate the Marvel Cinematic Universe's 10-year anniversary. So yeah, with all that said, let's get into the video. So, Captain America here, Steve Rogers, was a lot more complicated than I thought he would be when I was making him. Um... But he is, he definitely did turn out really great, and he's probably one of my favorite figures in this showcase. Um, but we'll start with the head. His head was made from, like, the regular, like, the Ultron uh, drone helmet, like, the one that, like, the top half. And pretty much all I did to it was I sanded down the front here a little bit, just because it went down a little bit too far, and it kind of, like, connected with the mouth, and I really didn't want that. So I sanded that down, painted the entire thing in a dark blue color, and then also added uh, the A that you see there, and then like the wings on the sides. And you can also see uh, ever so faintly some black lines right there. If I shine the light on it, you can see right there, just barely, and then also right there. They're really f faint and hard to make out, but they are there. Um, and then you can see... Uh, it's just a brown strap painted on to his head there, and then the cowl does go all the way down to his neck, and then connects with the rest of his suit. Um, so then you can see the torso is the regular Captain America from Age of Ultron torso, and I did have to repaint the star and the red marks that you can see on his chest there and there, because what had happened was I did not have enough... Captain America Age of Ultron torsos to use because I had the one for, that I used for Infinity War and then I think I had this one and I don't know what happened to the other ones that I got from Civil War but something happened to them I might have used them on other customs I'm not sure but this one was from a Civil War custom that I made right back when I was starting with uh, customizing and I had used some form of like paint or sharpie or something and I had covered the red marks on his chest and for the life of me I could not get it off so what I had to do was I had to use some acetone and I had to just uh, wipe it off and that unfortunately took the star and the red marks that were underneath with it along with the black lining that was on his chest so I did have to repaint them but I does but I d do think it looks pretty good uh, for being painted and then you can also see that I did add a little bit of weathering effect on the white on his torso there um, and you can see on his arms that he has the Avengers A's painted on him which were a lot harder to do than you might think um, and then just the white and some red uh, detailing and then just some silver and then the gloves do uh, come up a little bit onto his hands or onto his wrists I guess and then the legs were a lot more complicated to paint than you would think but to, uh, uh, before I talk about those I'm just going to talk about the shield real quick the shield is a regular just like a Captain America shield that we would get in like all kinds of sets like the regular like the light red shield which I then took and I painted it in a metallic red and a metallic silver and then uh, I painted the back of it in a metallic silver as well. Just so that I didn't have the red showing and that it actually looked like it was a vibranium shield. That got painted to become um, sort of like an American flag, I guess. And you can see on the back of his torso there um, that it is that there is some uh, light blue highlights. And you can also see that on the front of the torso there. But then getting the shield out of his hand, 
you can see all the detailing that I did do on the legs, which does go up a little bit up there, you can see that. Um, and then just some gray detailing, and then his boots, which are painted on, do go around all four sides of the minifigure's leg that you can see right there. Um, so then, yeah. And then that's pretty much it, uh, if you just take a look at the side of the leg there. And then the back is just a continuation of the boots. And I think that's pretty much it for Captain America, so let's move on to the next figure. So next up we have the Iron Man Mark 43 suit that he wore in the first two acts of Avengers Age of Ultron, or I guess Tony Stark wore in the first two acts of Avengers Age of Ultron. So yeah, um, you can see, um, we'll start on the helmet, and I guess that'll be the format for how we do all of these figures, is we'll start at the head and then we'll just work our way down to the legs. Um, so you can see on the helmet, I didn't really do anything, uh, special to the helmet, and then, uh, yeah, there's just really nothing special, and it's just a regular Lego helmet, but then if you, if I flip up the face mask, you can see that it is the Infinity War Tony Stark head that I decided to use on this one, because I just, I wanted to use it on one of these figures, and I only had one of them, so I just decided to do it in the Mark 43. Um, but then you can see if I take off the face mask that I did paint in the HUD that he's got in his suits. Even though it is printed onto the face, I did decide I still wanted to paint it in, which is pretty much just some blue lines on a black base, which I did also do in the Mark 45 in case I forgot to show you. Um, but yeah, so you can just see um, I didn't do anything to the helmet and I didn't do anything to the torso because the torso looks pretty freaking fantastic as it is. So I just decided I wouldn't do anything to it. And then the legs, you can see I did add um, some black detailing on the bottom there. And then also some gold on the side here. And then on the back as well. Along with on the other side, uh, like the inside legs. Then you can see there and there. But yeah. So then if we talk about the arms, it's pretty much just some gold detailing and some silver. Um, and then just some black lines as well. But yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for the Mark 43. There really isn't too much else that I did to this figure. I did leave the gold printing on the front of his legs there, like on his thighs. But I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, let's move on to the next figure. So the Iron Man Mark 45 suit here, piloted by Tony Stark in the third act of Avengers Age of Ultron, was definitely an afterthought when I was making this showcase because I really wanted to make the Mark 43 because I really liked the suit design. And then I was watching the third act of the movie and then I realized, yeah, okay, I should probably make the Mark 45 as well. So I did, and uh, here he is. I don't know if I put as much effort into him as I did for the Mark 43, but um, it doesn't matter that much um, because he does still look pretty good. So we'll start with the head and then work our way down. The head, I did paint all sorts of bright red highlights onto, and then outlined it in black, if you can see that there, because my camera would not focus for a second. Um, and then you can just see all the black and the bright red that I put on there, even on the front, like on the face mask here a little bit. Um, and then if I remove the face mask, you can see that it is a regular Tony Stark head, but the neck is painted in red, because... I painted it in red just to give him a little bit more of a look like he was inside the suit, which I forgot to do for the Mark 43, but I do want this video to come out on time, so I just couldn't paint it again. Then you can see here that I did paint in a HUD, which does look a little bit different from the one in the Mark 43, but I don't know, I think it still looks pretty good. So then we can put that back on the suit here, um, and then... We can just go through the torso, which I did give some bright red highlights to. Um, and then you can see just everything that I put on the torso there. It was pretty much just some bright red highlights, and that was about it. Um, and then on the back there, you can see the same thing. And then on his arms, it's just some gold detailing and then a little bit of silver and black. Um, and then you can see that I did put gold on his finger there and then some silver on his wrist just like on this one as well so you can just see the uh, gold detailing right there and then a little bit of silver right there um, and then his legs I did keep the front of them the same but I did paint the same red uh, color that I used on the torso just to make it look a little bit more consistent because I did also use that on the toes and then I used some metallic black 
on the bottom of the knees there, which was a little bit inspired by the moose figs, but I think I did paste that together just by looking at reference photos. Um, and then you can see there just the gold detailing. It's the same on both sides of the leg, but you can just see it here that you just got some black detailing outlining it and then a little bit on the inside along with some silver and then a little bit of silver down here and here um and then there is really nothing on his legs because he doesn't really have a lot on the back of his legs in the movie anyways so i just decided not to paint anything um and you can just see uh the figure in its entirety i think it looks pretty good for what i painted and i think that's pretty much it so yeah let's move on to the next figure so Thor here was probably one of the simpler figures that I had to make in the showcase, um, but he did turn out really great. So we'll start with the head, and his hairpiece is, I think, just one of the braided hairpieces, as you can see just in the back there. Um, and I decided to use this one just because it, it, it resembles his hair from the movie pretty well, um, and I didn't just want to go out and buy another hairpiece to use for this figure. Um, but then his head is just the regular Ragnarok and Infinity War Thor head from Lego that I repainted the beard and the eyebrows in. Um, and then you can just see that right there, and I did also do it on the other side of the head if I remove the hair, um, and the head doesn't come with it, so you can just see if the hair wants to come off, alright, you can just see it there that I did repaint that as well, but I don't really like to display it with that side of the head because Thor hadn't unlocked his, um, lightning abilities, for lack of a better word, yet in Age of Ultron, so he did still use the hammer. Speaking of the hammer Mjolnir, it is right here. I did custom make this version of Mjolnir. I think it's fully 100% my own because what I did for Mjolnir here was I took the regular Mjolnir hammer, like the one from Lego, and I painted the head of the hammer in uh, like a metallic silver color that it was it just washed over it, and then I cut that off of the handle. And then I took a brown rod and I just glued them together using crazy glue, which the problem in doing that was I wasn't really good at using crazy glue when I made the hammer. I'm still not super great at it because it gets everywhere, but it's fine. Um, but as you can see, just a uh, repercussion of that is the handle is a little bit too much to the right of the hammer, I, and I couldn't get it fully centered, but I mean, it's fine, it looks fine for what I tried to do for it, and as you can just see there, it looks a little bit too much to the right, but it's 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 all good, it looks fine, um, and then the torso, I didn't do anything to, the torso is the same as it came in the Age of Ultron sets, then you can see the arms I did take, and I painted his muscles onto, and then I also added his gauntlets with a little bit of hot glue on his hands, just to make it continue and look consistent. And I did paint on the muscles, just because Chris Hemsworth is ripped. So I did paint those on. Um, and then you can see on his legs, and I'll take Mjolnir out of his hand just so you can see that. Um, but his legs, I did take a piece of paper, cut it up, painted it, and then I glued that to the belt piece, just because he sort of does have a waist cape in the movie. And then I painted on the chainmail, which if I move the cape and I lift his hand up a little bit, you can see right there, it was not easy to paint in the slightest. That was kind of probably the hardest thing about this figure is getting that right. Um, and then I did paint on his boots, and like the line, uh, these silver lines, um, for his boots, and then you can just see that there, and I think that's pretty much it for Thor, except for the fact that I, um, I used a red cape, um, so yeah, I'm not gonna take off the cape, because there is just the torso, like the regular, uh, Age of Ultron torso behind it, so there really is no need, really is no need to remove it, but yeah, I think that's it for Thor, let's move on to the next figure. I couldn't figure out a decent stand for Big Fig, so I do have Hulk just standing here. But he was probably the simplest figure out of all of these figures that I've had to paint for Avengers and Age of Ultron. So yeah, pretty much all he is is a regular Hulk Big Fig. He's almost the same one from Infinity War. All I did was take the regular pants that he's wearing, and I painted some black torn pants over them. That's all I did. I added a little bit of weather effect, and then I also filled in the arms there, and there and yeah that's pretty much all i did i did also sand the hairpiece down so you can see that um just like on the sides and then i painted it in a the same color that i used for 
Mjolnir just thought it looked like he was getting a little bit older. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for Hulk. Did not do a lot for this figure. Um, and it's pretty much the same one from Infinity War. So yeah, and I'm just going to give you guys a fair warning right now. This will be the same one from for the original Avengers. So look forward to that. Um, that's pretty much it for Hulk. So yeah, let's move on to the next figure. And while we're talking about figures that you've already seen, the vision is the exact same as I had him in Infinity War. There is literally nothing different about this figure. Let's move on to the next one. So, Hawkeye, Clint Barton here, is definitely pretty simple. I don't know if it's the head is the exact same one I used from Infinity War or not, but it is definitely a pretty good looking head. So we'll start there and we'll move our way down. The head is a Legolas head that was used, obviously, on Legolas from Lord of the Rings, um, which I then took and I painted a mustache and a smaller beard onto, and then I also took the sides of the head and I painted some hair on. Then I took a regular, like, a Superman hair piece, like the one that, like, just a regular one that was, like, this. And I just sanded down the sides enough to make it just the top and the back so then you can just see that and i painted it in brown and then because his hair is like the the sides are a lot shorter than they than the top and the back are so i did decide to just keep that and then uh leave the hair the way it was and then paint it and it definitely looks pretty good i really like the way it turned out um and then his uh jacket is just made out of paper I painted it in black, and then I painted it using some uh, dark red here and here. And then you can also see the gray lines and then a little bit of silver as well. Um, and then you can see on the back, uh, there is a little bit more dark red just right there that you can see. Um, and then for his quiver, I just took a 2 by one tile that had a design printed on it that looks somewhat similar to his quiver. And I just glued it on there because I really didn't want to have to sculpt or like build a quiver for him like I did for Infinity War, and I think this one definitely does look a little bit better than my one that I used for Infinity War. Um, and you can just see the detailing on his arms there, and there, um, and then you can see um, on his legs, it's just some gray detailing along with some boots, like that's pretty much all there is without removing the coat. Um, if I move his arrow that I have him, which is just a regular standard Lego arrow, um, it, it's just an arrow. It doesn't. There's nothing special about it. Um, you can see that his legs. It's just the boots. If I could grab hold there, you can see it is just the boots um, with these straps that were insanely hard to paint for no in particular reason. They were just really, really hard to paint. Um, and then you can see his bow is a regular Lego bow that I took. I cut off the arrow and I cut off the string and then just left it as the base that it is here and then I uh, painted it in like a shiny metallic silver color um, and then you can see on his hand that I do have like the the thing that Hawkeye wears on his hand you know it's just it's 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 what whatever it is that's what it like the thing that grabs his arrows I guess um, then there is nothing on his other hand there but you can see that I did extend his jacket onto his wrists a little bit just so you can see uh, that there, and I think that's pretty much it for Hawkeye. Uh, there's nothing else about this figure. So yeah, let's move on to the next one. So we have probably one of my favorite figures to paint right here, Black Widow, and she was one of my favorites mainly just because she was kind of easy, but still had a little bit of challenge to her. Um, but yeah, so you can see on the head, it is the regular Black Widow hairpiece that came from Age of Ultron, uh, I guess all the way through Civil War and into Infinity War. Um, but I did repaint it in my own, uh, like, a uh, red color, and then uh, just put it onto the regular Natasha head, because I don't think there really is anything better than this one for now. Um, the thing you can see on her torso, I did leave all the printing the same, except for the one thing that I did, which was shave down the sides, just like I did for Colleen Wing. I shaved down the sides of a Black Widow torso, and in fact, I actually did actually... Uh, destroy one of these torsos. I actually cut too far and it turned out uh, creating a hole in the side which I could not have for my Black Widow so I had to order another one. Um, 
But yeah, and then you can see that I, it's, it's just the exact same printing. I didn't do anything to the torso except for shaving it down. And then I painted the sides in black. Um, and you can see just the gray lines that she's got on her tor on her arms there, and then her elbow pads and the uh, tasers, which I guess were referred to as Black Widow's bites. Um, and you can just see that uh, with the red, and then just all the printing or not printing with all the paint that is on there. Um, and then you can see the legs, I didn't do anything to except I painted these boots on, um, which do go around all four sides, which I forgot to mention Hawkeye's boots do as well, but you can just see that there, I guess, that it does go around all four sides, trust me. Um, and then I really didn't do anything else to her legs, but then you can see that her, uh, t like her rods, I guess, are regular like lightsaber blades that I took from Lego and I painted the black lines onto and I can paint black lines but around a round surface like this it was definitely challenging but I think it ended up looking pretty good um, and you can see that I did leave uh, an area for her to hold them there um, but yeah so I think that's pretty much it for Black Widow I didn't do too much else to this figure um, but that's pretty much it yeah so let's move on to the next figure we're almost through all the figures. We got Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch here, and then Pietro and Ultron. Um, yeah. So, we got Wanda Maximoff here, and we'll start with the head and work our way down. So, her hairpiece is the regular, like the... I don't know the name for it, but it's like wavy, and it goes down on the sides in the front, and then in the back. Um, that I just put over a Jin Urso head, which... I was inspired to do by Ross Michael MGF, um, because he used it on his Infinity War Scarlet Witch, and I thought it looked really good, so I put it on my Age of Ultron one, and I thought that it looked pretty good, and a lot like Elizabeth Olsen, so I just left it there, um, and then her torso was, and also I used it because this hairpiece can be murder to heads that are painted, so I did not want to paint a head for her. Um, and you can see the torso is just the regular Scarlet Witch torso from the Age of Ultron sets. There's nothing special about it, except that I did shave it down again on the sides, just like with uh, Natasha. And then you can also see the other side of the Jyn Erso head there. Um, but yeah, and then you can see that I did shave down the sides a little bit, just to give them a little bit more of a feminine, feminine touch. And then the arms, I just painted some skin tone on there, and then her, I guess like wrists, whatever that she wears on her wrists, I don't know what they are, and then her powers are being portrayed by some, like, small fire pieces that I did paint some metallic red onto. I think I used these exact same ones for Infinity War, but I'm not too sure. Um, and then her legs are just the regular ones from the set. I painted, I had to repaint the, uh, belt piece, though, because the regular one that came in the set was too flimsy, and the legs were just, they were, they weren't staying correctly on, so I changed it and then it worked a lot better. So I did have to repaint the wrinkles on there, but then you can see that the front of the legs, I did repaint the skin tone on, and then I just left the wrinkles there because they look fine. Um, and then if I get her power pieces, I guess we'll call them out of the way, you can see on the sides of her legs, I did continue some wrinkles, and then even on the belt piece as well. And then also with the skin tone all the way around all four sides of the leg, and you can see the uh, wrinkles there, and then on the back there. Um, and then I did not do any wrinkles on the insides because you really wouldn't be able to see them. But then I did also continue the skin tone on the inside of the legs. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for Wanda Maximoff here. I'll put on the head, or the hair, and then we can move on to the next figure. We are almost through all the figures, and we got our last Avenger, Pietro Maximoff, Quicksilver. It's been three years, I think I'm safe to talk about this movie, so rest in peace, man. Like... Quicksilver was pretty cool in the movie, and it's a shame that they killed him off and that we haven't seen him since. But hey, I mean, I liked him, and I wanted to do the figure at least a little bit of justice, so I painted him. And this is probably one of the simplest figures that's in this showcase, because I really did almost nothing to him. So you can see on the head, it's the regular, it's the exact same Quicksilver head. From the set, I didn't do anything to it. It's just, it's the exact same head. Um, the torso is the regular torso. I didn't do anything to the torso either. The arms just have a little bit of blue detailing on the shoulder and then on the wrist there. And then a little bit of white outlining on the wrist. Um, and then you can see his legs. 
have got the dark blue, like, the lines, I guess, right here, and, like, uh, right there, and there, and then those do continue onto the sides of the legs, right there, and the legs are really not that great on this figure, um, but then you can also see that I did have a lighter blue color, it's the exact same color that I used on, uh, Captain America for his pants here, and you can just see that right there, and then they, that is outlined with a little bit of white, this figure's legs were also inspired off of Ross Michael MGF's um, legs for his figure. And then the shoes are just gray, and then they got some white at the soles, and then a little bit of green in the front. So I think that's pretty much it. I didn't do really anything else to this figure. I mean, I guess I could show you. He's, he's still got his, if I can get the head back on and take off the hair, he's still got his alternative head, but I just, it's kind of faded. So I chose to display him with the angry head, which is like a, a, a little bit less. But I don't know. I'm I'm happy with how this figure, at, at least what I attempted to do with this figure. So I mean, yeah. Uh, let's move on to our last figure, which is Ultron, and then we can wrap up the video. Okay, so there's a lot we gotta go through with Ultron here. So I'm gonna try and break it down into pieces. So, the head was the regular Ultron Prime head, which I forgot to mention, by the way. I did paint Ultron Prime for this showcase. I didn't do Ultimate Ultron. I didn't do Ultron Mark 1. I, I did Ultron Prime because I like this, and it was easiest to find reference for. So, yeah. Um, but the head is the regular Ultron head. I enclosed it with the top, the top headpiece, and I actually was forced to use my... Ultimate Ultron's head pieces for this figure because I used the uh, Ultron Prime head pieces. I used the cowl part of it for Captain America, and then I used the bottom, like the jaw part of it for my cyborg from Justice League that I never showcased because that movie was garbage. So I I didn't showcase those figures. Um, but you can see that I did do a little bit of paint work. On the entire thing, I wrapped it in a silver color, the exact same one that I used on Mjolnir. Um, then I did do some paint work on top of that. Um, and then you can see his eyes. I really wanted to capture the personality of Ultron through his eyes. So if I can zoom in a little bit, just so you can see that a little bit better. My ha my camera is going to get handheld for a little bit, so I apologize if it's shaky. You can just see the eyes right there. I think they capture the personality of Ultron so much better than like the humanoid eyes that lego tried to put in their figure um and then while i have it zoomed in you can just see all the paint work that i did on the head there um and i really do like this head i think it looks like almost perfect for ultron um and then i did not do anything to his mouth in there i just left that the same because i think it looks fine man um but yeah so then zooming back out to continue with the figure you can see that their the paintwork on him is actually pretty good for the most part. I I'm really happy with it. The torso I did add some lighter uh, silver um, color like the paint to it just to make it look a little bit more consistent with the rest of the figure. And why I had to do that for the rest of the figure, why I had to use the lighter silver color was because I don't really have a dark like a darker metallic silver color one that would actually match with like lego's gunmetal or something that's even just a little bit lighter than that i don't really have one that's like that so i had to use this and the details look surprisingly stand out for this figure and it's a, it's a little bit jarring when you look at it because at first I painted it and it was just the legs that had it. And I was like, okay, that looks kind of insane when I have it with the rest of the, with the rest of like the torso and the head that did not have that. So I was like, alright, I'll add some on the torso. So I added some highlights on the torso in this uh, silver color. And then I left it and I was like, alright, this looks pretty good. And then I painted the arms and I could barely tell where any of the details were at all whatsoever 
So I was like, okay, yeah, I'm probably going to need to use this again. So I did, and it looks pretty consistent, and I'm happy with how it turned out. This entire figure, by the way, I'm just going to say right now, Ultron was so hard to find a reference for. I had some good some good reference photos, but it was so hard to decide what to put on the figure and what to leave off. So I just decided I'd go back to my old buddy Ross, who I've borrowed designs from in the past, and even a couple in this showcase. So yeah, I decided I would pretty much just copy his figure, which I feel a little bit bad for doing, but which rightfully so. I mean, I kind of almost just stole a design. But I mean, I think it looks pretty good. I, I interpreted it my own way, and I sort of just used his as like a base. So yeah. Um, what you're, I can already tell a lot of guys, a lot of you guys are going to be thinking, how did I make him taller? How does he look like, you know, how does he look like he's taller than a regular Lego minifigure? Because he is, you know, I have, if I take Cap and I put him here and I got to get him at like the, the, the same base height. So like if I have Cap here, you can see that he is a little bit taller that he is actually, okay. So he is actually a little bit taller. I'm going to add another piece underneath so you can see right there. He is actually taller than Cap or than any other Avenger aside from the Hulk. And if I'm just going to hold the Hulk here, you can see that he does go up to about the Hulk's chin area. Um, so yeah, and then I'll just move Cap out of the way there. So you can just see how I did that was I took a tutorial from, I believe it to be the Moose Figs or 97 Lego Maniac. I, I, I don't know. It was one of the two. I actually don't remember which one it was, but I used their extend year, like extend a minifigure's legs tutorial. So pretty much what they said to do was take like a Lego tile piece, like a, like just like a regular tile piece that's kind of like a stud, but like in a square. I don't know the exact name of it. And then to cut off just like the toe section of a Lego minifigure, so just there, and then add in the 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 tile on the bottom so that it would extend it by like just a little bit taller by one tile they would be taller and then i did that and he still wasn't quite as tall as i wanted him so i did it again and you can actually see in the back there on um, a little bit where i added the tiles so you can see and then he also does not have any more studs so he kind of can't really sit down on anything but again ultron doesn't really sit anywhere so it's fine um and then you can see just how much detail I packed into this figure, you know. You can see, I just bumped the camera, my apologies. Um, but you can just see just how much detail I put onto the arms and onto the legs and on the helmet because, or I guess like just his head. Because you can see right here, like I did even filled in the insides of the legs, you know, that you don't normally see. I put so much detail into this figure and I really am proud of how he turned out. And I don't think that I needed to bulk out the torso a little bit because a lot of people know back, I'm just going to use Ross as an example, when he made his Ultron back in 2015, you know, he got a lot of flack for using uh, Toy Story arms and legs and how, you know, the torso was too small and it didn't look bulky enough for the figure. And, my apologies, he, you know, he remedied that by using a torso piece, but I don't think my Ultron here is tall enough to warrant needing a torso piece so i think he looks fine the way he is you know i debated on sculpting on the torso or not but then i decided you know what it's fine i like the way it looks i'm happy with it i think my favorite part is still the head because of just how fantastic that looks but yeah i think that's pretty much it for the figure i spent like just about 10 minutes talking about him i apologize but then you can just see all the detail on him one more time i'll just turn him around and then I can also tell you for his arms, how I extended those, because they are also extended. I took a pair of regular Lego minifigure arms, and I cut off up till, like, the elbow, like, straight on the joint. I, like, cut right until there, and then I glued that onto the bottom of, a mini of another pair of minifigure arms, painted that, and then added you know, all of the stuff, put the hands in, and I think it looks pretty good. So I'm really happy with this figure. I'm really happy with how all of these figures turned out. So I think with all that said, let's move on and wrap up this video. 
So that is it guys for my Avengers Age of Ultron showcase video on all of the Avengers, the Twins, Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver, and Ultron guys. And I said at the beginning of the video that I have an announcement to make at the end of the video, so if you did stay until now, um, congratulations and thank you. Um, but as of today, the day that I'm recording this video, um, it was announced, or I guess revealed this morning, that Stanley has passed away. And I decided that in lieu of this, in his memory and in his honor, I was going to make a Stan Lee custom Lego minifigure. So that will get released, that showcase will be released sometime before the end of hopefully November, but if not that, but then by the end of the year, so that we can honor Stan Lee's memory, the man who created most, if not all of the figures, or I guess the characters that you see in front of you on your screens. So yeah, I will be making a Stan Lee figure, but may he rest in peace. And he lived a long life, so I mean, it's it's good that he gets to be reunited with his wife. So yeah, um, on a happier note, the Avengers 1 showcase video will be released by the end of the year. I have to finish Loki and uh, Thor and Black Widow, and then that will be released. So yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it, and I will see you guys later. Alright, if you want to, you can subscribe to my channel, or follow me on Instagram if you want. You know, I, I don't post it in my descriptions anymore, but like, if you go back on some of my older videos, you can probably find it. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. You can subscribe, and if you find yourself inspired to make uh, figures to celebrate 10 years of the MCU... Let me know by dropping a like down below or your opinion on these figures down in the comments. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it, and I will see you guys later. Alright, bye guys.